In this video, we take a look at data transmission methods. Data transmission can occur over very short distances, for example, from one computer component to another, short distances, say from a computer to a locally connected printer, and of course, over long distances from one computer to another over a global network. When data is being transmitted, we need to consider three essential factors. Firstly, the direction of data transmission. For example, can the data be sent in only one direction or both? The method of transmission. For example, how many bits can be transmitted at once? And finally, how will the data be synchronized? Let's start by looking at the direction of data transmission. First, we have simplex transmission. This is where data can travel in only one direction down a single cable. And this type of transmission might be used for sending data from a computer to a monitor as traffic only needs to move in one direction. Next comes half duplex transmission, where data can travel in both directions down a single cable, but not at the same time. This might occur when using parallel printer cables. A file is sent to the printer and the printer can respond with an error code such as ink low. However, the printer would have to wait until the computer had finished sending the file. And finally, full duplex, where data can travel in both directions at the same time using two communication channels. This is the most common form of data transmission and is typically found on network cables, both in LANs and across the internet. So now that we know that we can transmit data in simplex, full duplex and half duplex mode, we also need to understand that data can be transmitted via serial or parallel. And these two sets of terms can be used in conjunction. So, for example, we could have a full duplex serial transmission or a half duplex parallel transmission. With a serial data transmission, individual bits of data are sent one at a time down a single cable. With parallel data transmission, individual bits of data are sent simultaneously down a series of cables. OK, so let's compare these two side by side. Firstly, let's start with the serial transmission. This is now commonly used with USB, the Universal Serial Bus Interface. And we actually have a separate video on this. There's minimal interference as data is traveling down a single cable. The connections are simple and cheap to produce, and there's a better reliability of this over longer distances than parallel. Parallel data transmissions were commonly used with printer cables and other internal connections. With all things being equal, it was faster than a serial transmission because we can send multiple bits down multiple cables in the same time as sending one bit down a single cable. Now, the reality here is that parallel cables really aren't used anymore. Um, however, for the simplicity of your exam, because this is in the spec, there are some points that we should talk about. So although serial transmissions now become common and indeed plenty of Wi-Fi transmission methods, we can say that on balance, serial is lower transmission speeds than parallel due to only having one cable compared to many. Another drawback of parallel transmissions is it can only be used over very short distances. And we're going to take a look at why in a minute. So the separate bits of data down a parallel cable can end up traveling at different speeds. And this is due to tiny imperfections in the different wires. This can cause the bits to arrive out of sequence. And this problem was known as skew. And this is the reason parallel cables are only ever used over very short distances. Here's a summary of everything we've talked about and you need to know for your exam. So pause the video and take some notes.